A man stares at a table of scattered cards, not poker, but the fate of the universe. In a dream, he sees the building blocks of reality fall into perfect order. Ignored by his homeland, laughed at by scientists, he dared to predict the unknown and was right. He didn't discover elements, he saw the pattern that shaped them all. This is the story of the rebel scientist who cracked nature's code in his sleep. His name is Dmitry Mendeleev. A blizzard howls through the small Siberian town of Tobolsk. Inside a wooden house, a boy is born, the 17th child of the Mendeleev family. His name is Dmitri, and the storm outside seems to scream his arrival. No one knows it yet, but this boy will one day change all of science. Dmitri's father, once a teacher, goes blind while the boy is still young. Without his sight, he loses his job, and soon, his hope. The house, once filled with books and music, grows quiet. Dmitri watches his hero fade away. His mother takes over the family's glass factory, trying to hold them together. For a while, it works. Then, disaster strikes. The factory burns to the ground. Their only income, gone in smoke. All is lost. All, except one. Dmitri. Maria, Dmitri's mother, refuses to let his future slip away. She promises to get Dmitri to the best school in Russia, no matter the cost. With no business left to save, she packs their lives in a sled and leaves. She's chasing education like others chase gold. They cross thousands of kilometers on sleds and wagons. Snow bites their faces, but Maria never slows down. Dmitri studies books by firelight each night. He doesn't complain, he listens, he learns. In 1850, Dmitri and his mother arrive at the doorstep of a top school. She pleads with the officials, asking only for a chance. He is accepted. She collapses, her health fading fast. Dmitri carries her upstairs, one last time. Dmitri studies harder than anyone but he is sick. Tuberculosis eats away at him and he works through pain. His coat is thin, his notebooks are full. He will not stop, not for illness, not for comfort. At 19, he graduates with top honors, a gold medal in hand, but no celebration waits for him outside the hall. His mother has died. His name is unknown, but deep inside him, a fire has started and it won't go out. Dmitri walks into a lecture hall with wild hair and fire in his eyes. He speaks without notes, pacing, shouting, drawing shapes in the air. Students sit up straight. He's not like the others. It's not just a lesson. It's a revolution in real time. While others teach facts, Mendeleev teaches why. He tells students, chemistry is not just numbers, it's truth. He begins to notice strange patterns in how elements behave. Something is missing, something no one has explained. In 1860, the Russian Academy refuses to admit him. They say he's too strange, too loud, too radical. Dmitri is furious, but also amused. He doesn't want their medals, he wants the truth. He turns to order and precision, standardizing Russia's weights and measures. He travels across the empire, measuring grain, oil, iron, and gold. For him, even a kilogram must tell the truth. In the chaos of numbers, he starts seeing the skeleton of nature. Dmitri opens new labs, writes new textbooks, trains hundreds of scientists. He believes Russia must have its own science, 
not just borrow from Europe. His work shapes education across the country. His students call him strict, but fair and unforgettable. Publishers reject his massive chemistry textbook, too long, too strange. He shrugs and writes it anyway. Two volumes, nearly 1,200 pages. Every chapter is a challenge to the old way. He's not just teaching chemistry, he's rewriting it. In his classroom, debate is welcome, but laziness is not. He challenges students to think, to argue, to fight ideas. Some love him, some fear him, but all remember him. The air smells like chemicals and change. One night he sits alone, papers scattered, candles low. He cuts out cards, each with an element's data. He shuffles, stares, rearranges, again and again. Something is there, he feels it, but it won't click yet. February 17th, 1869. Dimitri jolts awake. The pattern he's been chasing, it came to him in a dream. Without dressing, he grabs a pen and writes. He does not stop until the table is born. He lays out the cards, one for each known element. Again and again, he rearranges them by weight, by property. Slowly, rows form, then columns, then order. Chemistry, for the first time, has a map. Dimitri calls it the periodic law. Properties of elements repeat in cycles. He isn't just organizing elements, he's discovering a law of nature. His chart doesn't just explain the past, it predicts the future. Some boxes are empty. Mendeleev says, they belong to elements not yet discovered. He names them like Eka Silicon and describes how they'll behave. The scientific world, stunned and skeptical. They call it guesswork, fortune telling, fantasy. Journals refuse to publish the full table. His Russian colleagues stay silent. Mendeleev stands alone, again, staring at his cards. 1886, germanium is discovered. Its weight, density, and behavior match Dimitri's Eka Silicon exactly. The world stares at his old prediction and goes silent. They realize he was right all along. France, England, America, now they quote his table. Medals, memberships, awards piled on at last. The world speaks his name, but in Russia, the academy stays quiet. Even the Tsar awards him a medal, calls him a national treasure. But the Russian academy still refuses him full membership. They say he's too controversial. Dmitri walks out of their halls and into history instead. In his final years, Dmitri turns to order, not just in chemistry but in society. He sets out to standardize all of Russia's weights and measures. From explosives to oil fuels, his expertise touches industry and defense. Russia becomes more modern, quietly, thanks to him. They say he created the perfect vodka, 40% by volume. But the truth, he studied alcohol for science, not drinking. The vodka tale became legend, and legend became fact. Even Mendeleev couldn't control what people wanted to believe. In 1882, Mendeleev marries a young art student. There's just one problem. He hasn't finalized his divorce. Russian law says it's illegal. He does it anyway. The public is shocked, but he doesn't flinch. Despite changing science forever, the Russian Academy still bars him. Too bold, too loud, too right. Mendeleev simply nods and keeps working. Recognition, he knows, is temporary. Truth is not. As the years pass, Mendeleev rarely leaves the lab. Surrounded by flasks and fire, he's most alive here. His hair grows long, 
his beard wild, he becomes a legend in real time. But to him, it's still just about the work. February 2nd, 1907, Mendeleev passes away in St. Petersburg. Scientists, students, and soldiers line the streets. Russia, finally, pauses to honor its most stubborn genius. He is laid to rest with no throne, but with endless respect. Decades later, scientists discover a new element. They name it Mendelevium, element 101. It's radioactive, rare, and powerful, just like the man it honors. Today, millions of students open their science books. The periodic table is there, organized, alive, and eternal. In the corner of that grid is his name, Mendeleev. The boy from Siberia is now in every classroom on Earth. He saw patterns where others saw chaos. He gave science its alphabet. They mocked him, they doubted him, but they all use his table now. If this story moved you, even a little, please consider liking the video, especially our loyal subscribers who see it first. It really helps the algorithm share it with more people who might need to hear it. And if it didn't resonate with you, we'd still love to hear your thoughts. Honest feedback helps us improve and make better content. If you'd like to see more stories like this, you know where to find us. You can also reach out on social media. Links are on the screen and in the description. We'd love to connect. Thanks for being here. Stay thoughtful, stay curious.